I get quite a few questions about removing rust. There are a lot of different recipes out there, from Coca-Cola to hydrochloric acid. There are a lot of different liquid methods. It's really not that complicated. I'm going to attempt to summarize the common liquid methods into one short video. This involves science. Scientists, please stop watching the video now. I'm going to get into this just enough to help out other guys like myself playing around in the shed to understand what some of the options are, if they work, and what chemicals you're playing with as a result. Phosphoric acid and nearly all of the commercially available rust treatment products convert rust into an inert iron oxide. These are unsuitable if you're after a bare metal finish. For parts that will subsequently be painted, I like phosphoric acid. Electrolysis. A bit of a pain to set up, but if you can deal with the hassle, electrolysis is the best cheap rust removal method. The best expensive rust removal method is evaporust. Then we have the acids. Vinegar, citric acid, oxalic acid, and hydrochloric acid. Most of the magical rust removal recipes you'll see on the internet are based on products containing one of these acids. All of these acids will remove rust, and all of them will corrode steel. But you probably only have to worry about that with hydrochloric acid. For you guys looking for the easy, cheap DIY option, I suggest citric acid. Let's start with vinegar, the internet's favourite rust remover. Vinegar is mildly acidic, and will remove rust. Vinegar sits at about 3 on the pH scale. Vinegar is mostly water, with about 5-10% to acetic acid. It's the acetic acid that removes rust. I'll only be showing the effect on iron oxide with three oxygen molecules, which is common brown rust. And acetic acid. Two carbons, four hydrogens, and a couple of oxygens. Don't pay any attention to the arrangement of molecules in this video, that's just me stacking them up. For this equation to balance out, we need six acetic acids. But that won't fit on the screen, so we'll pretend it works with two. So what happens is that the acetic acid pulls the iron out of the rust. This bumps the hydrogen, and our new element is ferric acetate, a yellowy brown liquid. That leaves a couple of hydrogens and an oxygen. Two hydrogens and an O is water. Half a day is how long I'm leaving the parts in the weaker acids. I'm not interested in waiting a week to remove rust. Vinegar is very weak, and not at all hazardous. It costs about $3 per litre. On rust, it's ineffective. There are cheaper methods that work much faster. Technically, vinegar will corrode good steel, but not to any noticeable extent in any reasonable time frame. Just to be fair to those perpetuating the vinegar method, I left the nut in overnight, plus another full day, and this is what it looks like. Citric acid. You may have seen me using citric acid in a few videos. I like it because it's cheap. I tend to use it on items like tool steel, maybe covered in a tarnish of rust. The acid is strong enough that it works, but mild enough not to cause any problems if you leave something soaking for the day. I don't pay any attention to a mixture ratio. Just mix some dry citric acid with water. Oxygen comes out of the rust and teams up with a couple of hydrogens to form water. That leaves us with two parts iron oxide. This is a black inert iron oxide that will typically break away from the part when the rust breaks down. The carbon and oxygen becomes carbon monoxide. The remaining oxygen becomes water. And the hydrogen becomes hydrogen. 
Just like vinegar, I left the nut in citric acid for about 5 hours. Citric acid is very mild and safe to use. You can buy it from the baking aisle of the supermarket in small quantities, but that's a pretty expensive way to get it. I buy mine from a bulk bin store for about 7 New Zealand dollars per kg. It's moderately effective, depending on the part. I wouldn't use it to try and get rust out of deep pitting. Citric acid will corrode good metal, but I've never noticed any adverse effects. I'd think it would take days to see any real effect on steel. Oxalic acid is a fairly strong acid. A little harder to find than the other acids, though I did purchase this from Bunnings. Oxalic acid is naturally occurring in many vegetables. The idea of using molasses as a rust remover has become popularised on YouTube. There's nothing miraculous going on. Molasses just contains traces of oxalic acid. Equally, you could remove rust by soaking parts in broccoli mash, or stuffing them inside a potato. Oxalic acid. Two hydrogens, two carbons, and four oxygens. We need six oxalic acids for the reaction to balance. The iron is pulled out of the iron oxide and binds to the oxalic acid. The hydrogens team up with oxygen to form water. That leaves us with ferric oxalate. That's the yellow liquid. I left the nut in the acid for about 5 hours. Oxalic acid is fairly strong. Try to refrain from splashing it all over yourself. This 500 gram bag cost about $18. The packet is marketed as a stain remover for timber, and in that use the packet says the mix will make 5 litres. As you can see, it's removed most of the rust, definitely more than citric acid. Oxalic acid is not going to cause any noticeable corrosion on your good steel within a reasonable time frame. Evaporust is not an acid, it is near enough pH neutral. It removes rust through a process called chelation. Chelation is when a chemical binds to a specific element, in this case iron, and pulls that element into a soluble state. The exact ingredients involved aren't published on the bottle, but this is approximately what's going on. Evaporust is manufactured to not be able to pull iron out of steel. It will however pull iron out of rust. I don't know what happens to the oxygen. The second part of evaporust pulls the iron out of the first, discarding it. This leaves the first part free to start all over again. In theory, evaporust lasts indefinitely. In reality there are inefficiencies and it will stop working after a while. I left the nut soaking for about 5 hours. I wouldn't trust that evaporust is non-hazardous. I bet the ingredients list reads like a chemist's dictionary. But it's not an acid so you don't have to worry about it in that sense. Evaporust is expensive, too expensive for me. I bought this small bottle for the sake of this video, but I doubt I'll be buying enough to use for any large parts. It will not corrode good steel at all, that's why if you can pay for evaporust, it's a much better option than any acid. Now for something a little more fun. And by fun, I mean burn your skin off. Hydrochloric acid is by far the quickest method in this video for annihilating rust. But it's not what you want to be using in most cases. Depending on the concentration, hydrochloric acid sits on the pH scale somewhere between 0.1 and 1. The stuff you get from the hardware store is going to be closer to 1. For this video, I'm using acid straight from the bottle. Normally I would dilute it at least half with water. So we have rust, and hydrochloric acid, one hydrogen and one chlorine, or chloride in this case. For this reaction to balance we need 6 hydrochlorics. The acid pulls the iron out of iron oxide and forms ferric chloride. That's the yellow liquid. The hydrogen teams up with the oxygen to form water. 
That's the perfect reaction with iron oxide, ferric chloride and water. But of course, the acid is also reacting with the iron and the steel. So basically, if we take away the oxygen, we still get ferric chloride, but we end up with hydrogen gas instead of water. That's what all the bubbling is. Bubbles equals your good steel disappearing. The nut was in the acid for something like three minutes. Is it hazardous? Yes. At this concentration, if hydrochloric acid comes into contact with skin, it will burn. The vapour is also nasty and corrosive. Don't use hydrochloric acid inside or anywhere near metal objects. I think a 4 litre bottle costs about $20. Hydrochloric acid is about as good as it gets for removing rust. The downside is that it leaves the surface of steel in an active etched state, which makes it very prone to rust. It'll also ruin threads and fine details in a short space of time. Because it etches the surface, hydrochloric acid is widely used as a preparation for electroplating and galvanizing, and that's what I use it for, a quick dip prior to electroplating. The next two options are different from the rest in that they convert rust rather than dissolve it. There are a huge number of these converters available, and they're all pretty much the same. This one is based on tannic acid, some are based on phosphoric acid, all with the idea of converting iron oxide into an inert black oxide. The basic chemicals that do the conversion are well proven. The difference between all of these products is the other fluff they put in them. Some of them are formulated into a gel, some of them harden to a layer of clear finish, some of them claim that the inert oxide they create is a magical black primer. This particular brand contains a binder that sets into a clear hard coating. I stress this to point out the difference between using these products compared to straight phosphoric acid. Do you really want that $10 bottle of rust converter to provide a primer layer under a $10,000 paint job? This converter is based on tannic acid. I'm not going to model that out on screen because the formula has way too many numbers attached. Depending on the specific product, there's no reason that these converters shouldn't convert 100% of the rust they come into contact with. The problem with this particular product is that the clear binder sets so fast that the tannic acid has very little time to soak into rust before it hardens. The conversion happens almost instantly. If the product is very weak it will take longer, and if the product is trying to be a paint system as well, you'll obviously have to wait for that to cure. This 1 litre bottle cost $26. So I've presented a fairly negative case for these converters. But I actually use this particular product all the time, for exactly what you're seeing here, a quick method to blacken and seal rusty nuts and bolts. Phosphoric acid is a rust converter. This bottle is labelled Rust Kill, but it's just phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is fairly strong. It's the magic ingredient in Coca-Cola. Good for your teeth. The phosphoric acid comes into contact with rust and converts it into a ferric phosphate. This will either fall away from the part, or if it is tightly bound to the steel, stay on the part as an obvious black mark. The hydrogen teams up with the oxygen to become water. In theory, the conversion happens the instant the acid comes into contact with iron oxide. But I normally brush it on and then leave it for a good half hour to soak in. It is fairly hazardous, nowhere near as bad as hydrochloric acid, but it is the next worse in this video. This one litre bottle was $18. It is effective on light rust. I haven't used it in the context of dealing with heavy scaling. That's where the angle grinder and welder comes out. Phosphoric acid is best used as one part of the prep process in dealing with panel steel on vehicles and other similar situations. Phosphoric acid will definitely corrode steel. If you're just brushing it on, that's not something to worry about. Finally, electrolysis. 
Assuming you already have some sort of power supply, a glass jar and a couple of bits of steel, this is the cheapest method of rust removal. There is some extra setup time compared to the other methods and the part will need scrubbing afterwards. What you'll need is a container of some sort, plastic or glass, an old cell phone charger or any other low current power supply, a strip of steel, this will be the anode. An extra piece or two will allow you to spread the current out around the container, but it's not necessary. The jar will be filled with water, just tap water. Before I filled the jar with water, you saw me add washing soda, sodium carbonate. This is what you'll see everyone use for electrolysis. But I want to point out that sodium carbonate plays no part in the rust removal process. Its only role is to increase the conductivity of the water. I think this will work fine with just water, though it'll take longer with the equivalent amperage. Alternatively, you could also increase the conductivity with a spoonful of table salt, but that will give off chlorine gas. Unless you're huffing the jar, I doubt that'll be an issue. But I suggest just use washing soda like everyone else. It only costs a couple of dollars. So there are two separate processes going on. The first is electrolysis, the second is the rust removal. If we pass a current through water, gas is generated at either pole. At the positive pole, or anode, oxygen is produced. And at the negative pole, or cathode, hydrogen gas is given off. That's electrolysis. Now the second part is rust removal. This is a reaction between the hydrogen and any oxygen contained in the cathode. The big mass of ions represents our steel part. The hydrogen pulls the oxygen out of the iron oxide. Mostly, the rust will break apart and the iron from the iron oxide will fall away. It's possible that if the rust is tightly bound, that the hydrogen will pull the oxygen out and the iron will stay in place. Thus, we've actually recovered iron oxide back into the part. Derusting this nut took about two hours, but that will vary depending on the size of your part and the amperage. This isn't hazardous. You could give yourself a shock, I guess. Hydrogen is flammable, and technically there is a risk of explosion. But at this scale, I doubt we're going to get anywhere near the concentration of hydrogen gas needed to cause an explosion. It's cheap. Assuming you have all of the equipment around the house, it costs next to nothing. Let's say $3 for the sodium carbonate. It is very effective at removing rust. The only other method that works as well is evaporust. The biggest downside of this method the part is covered in black gunk afterwards, that you will need to remove with a wire brush. Electrolysis will not harm your steel part at all. For small parts, electrolysis is my preferred method of rust removal. Sometimes an acid is more convenient, and evaporust works just as well if you can afford it. In summary, all of these methods are worth trying, but if I can get away with it, there's still only one best method.